Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to PaizoCon 2023, right here on the internet. Uh, I'm Eric Mona. I am the publisher and chief creative officer at Paizo. And allow me to be the first to welcome you to this year's PaizoCon. PaizoCon is an annual tradition that we've been doing for more than a decade. This year, it is online only. And what a great opportunity to welcome so many new uh, Pathfinder players who have come to Paizo uh, since the beginning of the year. We've had tens of thousands of new players check out the system, and now we want to truly welcome you to the Paizo community by inviting you to take part in a weekend of gaming, panels, live chats, AMAs, all kinds of stuff we've got planned from today all the way through the end of the weekend. We've got a whole crew of people to talk to you about it this year. It's not just me. We got all kinds of developers and designers and folks to come and talk specifically about the stuff they're working on uh, just here in the keynote, but then of course throughout the whole weekend. So let me break it down a little bit. We got lots of different ways to participate in PaizoCon this year. We, of course, have the streaming schedule. You're watching it right now. All weekend long, all day long, we've got presentations from Paizo's creative staff, some of our business partners, virtual tabletops, all kinds of stuff going on to give you that con experience of being at a panel discussion. We have Q&As. We got a whole host of different uh, activities uh, planned on our Twitch stream. That is official Paizo uh, on twitch.tv. Uh, check out uh, streams going on the entire weekend. But you can plan out your weekend and plan out your streams and your games and everything else we've got going at PaizoCon by going to paizo.com slash PaizoCon. There you'll find an entire streaming schedule. You'll find ways to sign up uh, for Paizo Organized Play to get involved in some of the more than 400 games that are happening live 24 hours a day all weekend long. Uh, you can join the official Paizo Discord where we've got members of the Paizo staff hanging out doing Ask Me Anythings, uh, live chat hangouts. It feels like a, like a real convention, only it's online and it's going to be here for you all weekend long. Once again, the uh, home base for PaizoCon 2023 is paizo.com slash PaizoCon. Hop onto the Warhorn and that it will give you links to different adventures that we've got going on all weekend long in a variety of different virtual tabletops. You can pick your poison, either Pathfinder, Starfinder. There's probably even a few other things in there if you look hard enough. So check out uh, the Warhorn on the link at paizo.com slash paizocon, and we'll get you in a game just as soon as we can. You know, with so many new people coming to Paizo and Pathfinder in Starfinder over the last year, it's really important to understand that it's more than just a game. It's more than just a company. It is a community of like-minded players, gamers, and friends. And this is a great opportunity to get to know some of those folks, uh, either by watching and participating in chats during the streams, hopping onto our Discord, uh, joining in on an AMA, meeting other Pathfinder, Paizo, and Starfinder fans, and really just kind of coming on board. We're so thrilled to have you. Uh, and uh, for longtime veterans, you're going to find lots of fun stuff as well. We have packed our streaming schedule. And in fact, even this keynote with a whole bunch of product reveals, new looks at covers, things that we haven't talked about, things that we've hinted at. This is a big news weekend. So if you're really into our games and want to learn the latest developments for Pathfinder and Starfinder and Paizo itself, you have come to the right place and we welcome you warmly. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a ton of panels. The big news of the year and one of the main reasons we have so many new folks coming to us in 2023 is the change that we've seen in the environment around the open game license. Uh, that has caused us to to band together with 1,500 other publishers to work on something called the ORC license, the Open RPG Creative License. And this is the license that we will be publishing Pathfinder and Starfinder on going forward, starting in the future. Uh, this whole process begins 
in November with remastered core rulebooks for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Now, it's still 2nd Edition that you've come to know and love. We're not fiddling with the action economy or any of the underlying rules, but we are giving it a new coat of paint to focus more on the Pathfinder elements than some of the legacy elements that we inherited from using the open game license uh, back when we spun off uh, from our friends uh, at the Dungeons and Dragons land. So uh, it is a new time for Pathfinder. It is a great time to get involved. The Orc license is just wrapped up uh, 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 one of the final rounds of commentary, and we hope to have it completely done by the end of the month. And then our first big Pathfinder remaster hardcovers are coming in November with Pathfinder Player Core and Pathfinder GM Core. We've already talked about these on previous streams a few weeks ago, but here at PaizoCon, during this panel, in just a few minutes, we will be revealing the final color art by Wayne Reynolds of the Pathfinder Player Core and the Pathfinder GM Core. Now, uh, you've probably already seen the sketches for these, which we showed a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they are breathtaking. We're even doing special sketch editions for our hobby retail partners, so you can get a copy of their new rule books with the sketch cover if, if you're really into Wayne's pencils. But if you want to see Wayne's fully painted uh, art, uh, it, that is going to happen in just a few minutes when I welcome Logan Bonner to talk about the Pathfinder Remaster project. It is breathtaking. Uh, that's the word I'm going to use for those covers. I've been working together with Wayne Reynolds for more than 20 years, and I think these are some of the finest painted pieces I've ever seen from him, and I am so excited that, to get you a chance to look at them as well. So coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to have Logan Bonner, Pathfinder's lead designer, take you through the remaster project and a few of our other upcoming releases. Uh, and he will be joined by teammates Luis Loza and James Case, who will be talking about other releases in our rulebook line, like the exciting Rage of Elements book that comes out at Gen Con in just a few weeks. Uh, the newly announced Howl of the Wilds hardcover. There's all kinds of information about that we're eager to share. And Luis will also take us deeper into the Lost Omens campaign setting line uh, that really kind of peels the curtain back on Galarian, the setting of the path find a role-playing game. We've got exciting uh, looks inside our upcoming Dwarf Book of High Helm. We've got uh, Linda Zias Palmer and our long-term creative director, James Jacobs, coming to join us here during the keynote to talk about Pathfinder adventures that are coming up. We've got uh, Thurston Hillman is going to be coming uh, with Jenny Jarzabski, members of our vaunted Starfinder staff, to talk about the future of Starfinder and some really exciting plans that we have for the Starfinder game. And then we we have Mark Moreland, uh, who's going to be coming in to talk about some of our uh, partners, including Demiplane, the character building software that uh, is about to launch. And also uh, our new uh, uh, game, The Abomination Vaults, a survival game by BKOM. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about Foundry Tabletop. We're going to talk a little bit about our friends at Dynamite uh, Comics, who are doing a Dynamite Comics Kickstarter that you can go check out right now for some compiled versions of three different Pathfinder and Starfinder stories. And uh, we also will have uh, Linda Zias Palmer and Alex Spindell coming by to give an overview of Pathfinder and Starfinder Society organized play, both what you can get involved with here at PaizoCon and then what's going to be happening throughout the rest of the year as we gear up new Starfinder Society season here at PaizoCon and a new Pathfinder Society season that will start in the beginning of August at Gen Con. So tons of information to talk about there. I'm going to come back at the end to give a little bit of additional wrap-up information and one big reveal that we have never talked about anywhere in public yet. So lots of really exciting stuff. I would encourage everyone to bookmark paizo.com slash PaizoCon for a show schedule, streaming schedule, ways to get involved with organized play, a link to the Discord. Really everything that you need is right there. And lastly, I would ask that people check out the Paizo blog because just today, as we are wont to do, we have announced a special discount code for PaizoCon that during the course of the weekend, you'll be able to get some discounts on Paizo releases uh, here on the Paizo web store. So we've got special discounts. We've got in-person staff AMAs. We've got 
games that you can join 24 hours a day. We've got a fake bar on the Discord where you can come and chat just as if you were at a real live con. And you know what? It is a real live con. It's a real live con for 2023 right here on the internet. So I welcome you all to another exciting PaizoCon. We love to do this every year and we're thrilled to have you with us. Some of my colleagues are gonna take some time uh, over the next hour and a half or so and give some previews of things yet to come over the rest of the weekend, show off some new reveals, new covers, and really get into the details on the amazing work that they do for Pathfinder, Starfinder, and Paizo itself. And the first person that I would like to introduce to you to take the microphone here at the PaizoCon 2023 keynote is Pathfinder's own lead designer, Logan Bonner, who's here to talk about the Pathfinder remaster. I'll be back in just a few. Take it away, Logan. Hi, everybody. I'm Logan Bonner. I'm the Pathfinder lead designer, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Pathfinder second edition remaster project. We are going to have four main books coming out for this. The first two start uh, coming out in November. That's going to be Player Core and GM Core. And then Monster Core and Player Core 2 are going to follow in 2024. These books present the core rules of the game in a new format, in new books uh, that are going to kind of refresh things, compile some, uh, some of the best parts of the second edition uh, classes and spells and rules uh, for kind of a new thing to get new people involved and to update some things for the Orc license. Uh, there's going to be some cleanup, but the rules are compatible with everything else that we published for second edition with a few small exceptions, but ones that are pretty easy to manage. Uh, why are we doing this? Uh, there are a couple reasons. Uh, the thing that kicked off this project were the legal concerns over the OGL that came up uh, at the start of this year. And the uh, that situation is somewhat resolved, but we have decided to go with the ORC license that is really going to uh, let us be a fully free and separate game and avoid any, you know, change of decisions by the people who uh, claimed that they could change the OGL previously. Uh, so with the Orc license, these rules are going to be open and they're going to remain open uh, forever. Uh, but once we started that process, uh, we didn't want to just, you know, rename a few things and call it good. Uh, we wanted to look at things that people have been uh, asking for, uh, look at places we can improve the rules and the presentation, and produce some books that are really going to satisfy some needs of folks in the community. Uh, we had a lot of feedback from fans and potential fans. They wanted slimmer books. They wanted books that were easier to reference. Uh, they wanted a few things cleared up. And so that's what we've done with these remastered books. Uh, everything that you already love about Pathfinder is still there. It's, it's, the setting's still there. Uh, the, like I said, most of the content you've already picked up is going to work just fine in it. Uh, and it's going to play just like the game you're already playing, but a little faster, a little cleaner, and with, uh, with some really fun additions. So, uh, why might you want to pick up these books? Well, if you're a new player, the really great thing here is that the player core is going to contain all the player rules and none of the game master rules. So if you didn't feel like buying a book that had all the GM stuff in it, you can pick up just the player core. You're going to get a little bit of a smaller book, something easy to, easier to carry around, and that's going to have uh, a nice kind of cleaned up presentation of those rules uh, and the content for the core classes that, uh, that appear in it that came from both the core rulebook and advanced player's guide and a few new things added on. Uh, this book is going to uh, have kind of fewer barriers. Uh, it's gonna have, uh, you know, it's gonna be a little easier to understand uh, and it's gonna be a really good way to get started with Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, if you already have the books, you've been playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition for a while, uh, you're gonna give some of the same advantages. The books are easier to reference, easier to find uh, some, some of the rules um, quicker and some of the issues that people have had with the game previously are going to be addressed. We're making a few revisions to uh, some skills, how some of the classes work uh, to make it uh, kind of more fun, faster, uh, and easier to use. Um, there's also going to be some new content in these uh, that I think you're going to find uh, find exciting, uh, some expansions and some uh, some really fun stuff in there. Uh, and a lot of the changes we're making are to kind of allow you more flexibility, allow you more creativity in how you make your characters, how you play your characters. 
As far as what goes in the books, uh, first I'm going to uh, show you the final covers for these books by Wayne Reynolds. Our sketches have been available for a while, but here is the final book, uh, the final book cover for Player Core. Uh, you can see there some of our iconic characters uh, taking on a diabolic dragon. And, uh, you know, you can place your bets on whether you think they're going to make it through this fight or not, because that seems like a pretty tough monster. Uh, but that's the kind of adventures that you can get into in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, for the content of the book, it's going to have all the ancestries that originally appeared in the core rulebook. That's dwarf, elf, gnome, goblin, halfling, and human. Plus, it has the new classics, the Leshy and the Orc. The Leshy originally appeared in Lost Omens Character Guide and the Orc in Advanced Player's Guide. You're also going to see that Versatile Heritages, which also premiered in Advanced Player's Guide, are making the jump to the core books. This is one of those concepts that will be really nice to kind of have in the base book for the game. Uh, this is heritages that any ancestry can take. Uh, we've already announced the Nephilim, who are ones who are kind of uh, inspired by angelic or demonic or diabolic, kind of those, uh, those higher planes. They're uh, using some of that, but now you can kind of mix and match those a little more freely uh, to make a, a character that is kind of even weirder. Um, and we're going to have some details about those in the Pathfinder Remastered panel, if you want to, to join us for that. Uh, we're also going to be uh, announcing a little bit about the other versatile heritages that appear in that book at that panel. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. Uh, the book also contains backgrounds. There's a few more in there than were in Core Rulebook. Uh, and there are eight classes in this book. There's the Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Rogue, Witch, and Wizard. Uh, the biggest revisions came to the Witch and the Wizard of all these classes. Uh, the Witch is going to be a little more kind of flavorful. Uh, there's going to be a few more things to kind of guide you and some really meaty uh, thematic things to sink your teeth into. Uh, and we're going to talk about the, the Wizard changes uh, also in that Pathfinder Remastered panel. Uh, we also include the animal companions from the core rulebook and the advanced player's guide. There's a little bit of a refresh on those. Those are to kind of go with these uh, pet classes that are in the book, the druid, the ranger, and the witch in particular. Uh, the skills are going to get an update with some better presentation uh, and revamped recall knowledge and craft actions, as well as a few other little tweaks, mostly for presentation. Um, and general feats uh, are also going to be, it's a bit longer with some more options in there and some revamps. Uh, equipment is going to include basic assistive items, such as a, a, a basic a wheelchair, uh, a traveler's wheelchair, um, uh, prosthetics, those sort of things, uh, as well as uh, kind of a, a really nice presentation that is going to make that chapter easier to navigate as well. And spells is going to have a lot of new spells, a lot of tuned up spells, uh, there are a lot of spells that we looked at and said, you know, is this really worth taking at its level and for how much it does and kind of uh, amped up some of those spells that didn't feel like they were quite cutting the mustard to make them a little more appealing uh, and make it feel like you're really getting your money's worth for using those spells. Uh, Playing the game is the final chapter of the book, and that has also been revised drastically to be easier to reference. I think you're going to find it much easier to find the rules you need uh, in that new playing the game chapter. Now, what's the other book coming out in November? That is GM Core. Uh, GM Core, uh, we also have the final cover art from Wayne Reynolds that we're going to put up right now. This cover shows the Rune Lord Xander Ghoul and a Mirage Dragon. That is one of our new dragon types, along with that Diabolic Dragon we showed earlier, uh, which were concepted by Kent Hamilton. And these are kind of the, the Wayne Reynolds take on them. Uh, which looks really gorgeous. You can kind of see the the swirling, spiraling pattern on its scales, uh, which is, is very cool looking. GM Core is going to take all of the rules and advice for running the game from the core rulebook, uh, as well as all of the great advice and subsystems from Game Mastery Guide. It's going to put that all in one place. Uh, this is a spot where it's really nice to have that all in one place and cleaned up. There's a lot less flipping between books. It's going to be much easier for the Game Master to use. Uh, it's everything you need from those books. Uh, it starts off with a chapter on running the game, which is going to tell you all the stuff you'll need in the moment. Uh, then the next chapter is building games. If you're going to make a campaign, you're going to make an adventure. Everything down to like encounters, hazards, creatures, all the way down to individual items. 
and all the way up to building your own world. There's advi advice for all of that stuff in there. Uh, then we have a setting chapter, the Age of Lost Omens chapter. That is going to include most of the setting information from the core rulebook uh, with some updates, some clarifications, and some really cool uh, representation of that information to make it faster and easier to kind of uh, figure out like the core thing about different regions and, uh, and use those in an interesting way in your game. Uh, then we have subsystems. This is mostly the subsystems from Game Mastery Guide. Uh, and it has a few tweaks and updates uh, to cover some issues that people had run into with using those uh, in their games so far. And then the final chapter is the treasure trove. This is magic items, alchemical items, all presented in an easier to reference fashion. If you liked the presentation of Treasure Vault, you're going to find that this follows a similar structure and you'll be able to uh, select treasure to give to your players and to place in your adventures. Uh, we've previewed some of the talismans that appear there on paizo.com and a blog, and you can so you can go get your first sneak peek there. This section also includes some Game Mastery Guide categories like artifacts and relics, uh, cursed items, some of those other things uh, that are primarily like a GM tool and a storytelling device. Uh, those are all in here as well. So that's the first two books at the remaster panel. We're going to talk a little bit about Monster Core and Player Core 2 and give you just a ton more information uh, on Player Core and GM Core. It is a two hour panel, so you're going to get all kinds of cool stuff there. Uh, if you want to check out these books, uh, the best things to do are go to paizo.com where you can see some of our blogs with more information and you can also pre-order the books. Uh, we also have some retailer exclusive sketch covers by Wayne Reynolds, uh, which we're going to show right now. These sketch covers are hobby retailer exclusives. So go to your local game shop, your, your favorite store, and ask them about pre-ordering these for November of 2023. All right, so that remaster panel I was mentioning is up next after the keynote ends at noon Pacific time. Uh, it's going to be myself, Jason Bullman, Michael Sayre, and James Case talking about uh, those, the remaster in great, great detail. Uh, so we're going to talk about a few other widespread improvements that we haven't talked about yet. We're going to give some details on the changes we're making to classes and on versatile heritages. Uh, and we're going to do a Q&A. You might have time to jump in and drop a question uh, before that panel starts. We're going to answer as many as we can. Uh, even in a two-hour panel, we're very talkative folks. We'll have a lot to say. Uh, and with that, uh, that's all I'm going to say about the remaster for right now. But for some of the other things that we've been working on, I'm going to throw it over to James Case. Hi, everyone. My name is James Case. I'm senior designer at Paizo, uh, working on the rules and lore team for Pathfinder. And I'm here to talk about all of the cool hardcovers we have coming out above and beyond the remaster, because we have a lot of cool stuff coming up, uh, and that's just come out. So the first thing, of course, is we have Treasure Vault. This is our big book of items. This gives you new magic weapons, armors, shields, all sorts of cool alchemical items and potions, assistive devices, all that kind of good stuff. It also has a lot of cool new ways that GMs can integrate these items into their games and stories, things like gardens that can allow you to grow your items naturally, other new crafting options, that sort of thing. And the whole thing is narrated by a dragon, Velashina's Mistress of the Vaults, and her plucky kobold assistant, Pereperin, as they kind of take you on this journey throughout one of the biggest repositories of magic items and artifacts in Galarian. So that just came out in February. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to try out some of those cool items and weapons, build them into your characters, and that whole thing. Um, but we also have a lot of stuff that's kind of right on the horizon. So. The next thing we have coming up is, of course, Rage of Elements. This is our big book of elements and elemental magic releasing at Gen Con this year. This introduces you to the six elemental planes. That's up from four because the plane of wood and the plane of metal have kind of re-emerged into the cosmos after some of the events that have happened in our storyline. So in each one of the chapters of this book, you'll get a different breakdown of one of these elemental planes. You'll get to hear about it from somebody who's very knowledgeable. Um, as they take you through the plane, you'll also meet the two elemental lords that kind of uh, rule over and see and kind of see over each plane, as well as a bunch of spells, magic items, and cool monsters. Uh, that each have to do with each of those planes. And of course, this also introduces a uh, really anticipated new class, that's the Kineticist. So the Kineticist is your character that can wield the elements freely. They pull them out through this inner gate inside of them, 
and they can shape fire or or bend the winds around them or evoke earth and metal kind of as much as they want. Um, we had a playtest for this class back in fall of last year. And thanks to everybody's data and feedback, uh, we've kind of taken this, we've refined it. Um, we've given them a bunch of ways that they can use the elements and kind of bring that fantasy really to the table. And of course, we have our iconic kineticist, Yoon. You might remember her from Pathfinder First Edition, where she was more of a little kid. And time passes at the same rate in Galarian, so now she's all grown up, more powerful, but still adventuring. Uh, so that's one of the things that's really cool to see about this. We have a cool new art from Wayne Reynolds uh, that's all painted. And you can see that she's, you know, she's still the same character, but has kind of evolved in her time as an adventurer. Rage of Elements is also really cool because this is our first uh, book that is compatible with the Orc license. So we will be having this out. Uh, and as we were working on the Orc license and on the remaster projects, we were also putting together, uh, we were also putting this book together in a way to have, make sure that everything would be consistent when it came out. So you'll see some previews of the changes coming in the remaster products. And we'll also be launching this alongside uh, a document of references that will kind of bring you up to speed on what you'll need there. Um, if you're interested in this book, we'll be talking about this more at our Primal Previews panel, which will be Saturday the 27th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and that's not the only book we'll be talking about on the Primal Previews panel, because we have just announced our latest book, Howl of the Wild. Um, this release, or we announced this just a couple weeks ago. Uh, and this book is our next big creature book. This is all about beasts, animals, and the wild. So we'll look through this book kind of from the perspective of this older naturalist. Uh, he's an Aruxi who's going off and seeing the world in search of these four wardens of the wild uh, in his fantastical airship uh, alongside an eccentric crew. Uh, each one of these crew members is a member of a different ancestry, and that's because this book will come with six new playable ancestries, each one of which is a little more uh, a little more on the wild side. The two that we've announced so far are the Minotaur, you know, which is big and strong, and the Centaur, which is swift and uh, good at looking at the stars and, herbal and herbalism and that sort of thing. Um, so we will also of course, this is a creature book, so we're going to give you a bunch of new animals and beasts as well, uh, and whether that's regional variants on some classics or totally new ones that take a lot of inspiration from real life uh, animals and that sort of thing. And of course, a bunch of spells, archetypes, and new feats. So if you're interested in that, we will also be talking about that at our Primal Previews panel on Saturday. Uh, so I look forward to talking with you more about those projects then, uh, and I'll pass things off to Luis to talk about the setting. Hi, I'm Luis Loza, Creative Director for Rules and Lore over here at Pathfinder, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Lost Omens line of setting books that we have here. We have a lot of great stuff in the Lost Omens setting that we've been talking about over the years, and I want to just give a little focus on stuff that is coming up here in, in uh, 2023 and later, even in 2024. The first thing I want to talk about is a book that's already out. It's uh, Lost Omens Firebrands. It's a book that focuses all about the Firebrands organization, an organization that's all about rebels and braggarts. It's kind of a contradiction. It's all about helping people and, and stopping oppression while also trying to look good while doing so. It's uh, one of our newer organizations here in Pathfinder 2nd Edition that was featured alongside the Pathfinder Society, Magambia, Hell Knights, and Knights of Last Wall uh, in the Lost Omens Character Guide. And this is our, our in-depth look at this organization. It's got a little bit of everything. If you need to know all about Firebrands, this is a book to check out. It talks about the history and establishment of the Firebrands. It gives you kind of the everyday life of a Firebrand, how to join the organization, things like that. It also goes into the various factions within the organization. There are various groups. Some are more focused on the rebellion aspects. Some are more focused on just having fun and looking good while doing so. And it even talks about NPCs that are the heads of these groups or other NPCs you might run into if you decide to join up with the Firebrands. And of course, like all of our Lost Omen setting books, it features a lot of adventure and campaign hooks. It talks about where the Firebrands show up throughout the inner sea, the kind of things they're doing, the kind of people they're helping, and the kind of people they're trying to stop uh, while uh, trying to help 
uh, the, the people of the inner sea. As this Alonso Omen's book, lots of great setting information, but of course, it also includes new mechanics for players out there. It includes a lot of new equipment, including uh, weapons and armor, and a lot of infiltration and intrigue stuff, uh, magic items, spells. It has uh, new feats as well for classes. You know, if you're playing a rogue or you're playing an investigator or a swashbuckler, lots of feats for you there, or feats for existing archetypes if you are playing the dandy archetype, for example, or the celebrity archetype, you're going to be getting new feats in this book to expand on the, the kind of fun things you can do or the more subtle things that you can do. And if you're not using the Lost Omen setting, I think there's still a lot of cool things that you can use in this book. Uh, I can look at this book as kind of the general rebellion book. Knights of Last Fall was our knight's book. Our Pathfinder Society Guide was kind of our general adventuring book. And here you have lots of great uh, tools and information that you can use for your own games to use for rebellions and spies and infiltration and things like that. There's even a, a new suite of services if you need to learn the prices for smuggling something or for setting up a safe house. This book has that information, which you can use in any campaign, whether or not you're playing with firebrands. So lots of great options. But like I said, this book is already out now. You can go to your local game store, go to paisa.com and order it today to get in on the fun with Firebrands. The thing I really want to talk about is our upcoming release, which is Lost Omens High Helm. This is a new book that's coming out in June. And this book is kind of pulling double duty. It's both a gazetteer of the city of High Helm and also a big focus on dwarven culture. High Helm is... An enormous city. It's one of the various sky citadels that were created by the dwarves after they completed the Quest for Sky. For those of, know, for those of you not in the know, the Quest for Sky was the original big journey that the uh, dwarves did from the Darklands underground to reach the surface and finally see what the sky was. There, there was this big prophecy and they wanted to go figure that out. They reached the sky and they reached the surface of Galarian and then in celebration created a variety of different sky citadels, big fortress cities that they live out of some to this day. And High Helm is the largest hub of dwarven culture within the inner sea. Among the 10 sky citadels, it's the one that's still most populated, most prominent, most well-known. And for those of you who are interested, we will be revealing every single sky citadel that's been inhabited by the dwarves or created by the dwarves. We've mentioned a couple over the years, but this book goes at the very least, lists what all 10 of them are. So you get a chance to Use that for ideas and adventures in your own games. But like I said, High Helm is a big hub of Dwarven culture, and it's also a nexus for trade and diplomacy within the Shining Kingdoms region of the Inner Sea. There's lots of foreign trade, there's foreign diplomats. It's both a Dwarven, uh, Dwarven cultural center and also a connection to the rest of the world. A, it's not just an isolated place. You can find a variety of different people. You can find elves, you can find humans, halflings, you can even find orcs and goblins living on High Helm. It's very, very cosmopolitan, a very interesting city. What's particularly interesting about the city is how fantastical it is. It's a city that's been built into the inside of a giant mountain called Emperor's Peak. And, you know, most traditional fantasy cities are just out there, they have walls and stuff. This is inside of a mountain, which is really fun uh, opportunity to explore what makes the city really interesting. Uh, the main parts of the city are broken up into three major layers, the three major districts of the city, and then an extra region known as the Depths. So the topmost layer is King's Crown, which is the seat of government and wealth. King's Heart is in the middle, and it's the industrial and religious center of the city. And down at the bottom, where you can access the ground and get out to the rest of the world, is Stone Breach. It's the home of artists trade and innovation that's where you'll find a lot of the non-dwarven population and scattered among the mountain and beneath the layers of the city and the mountain itself are the depths which just is the general broad term for all the additional tunnels and caverns and other parts of the city that are built into the ground in the underground and into the mountain and it also connects to the dark land so if you want your adventures to go deeper even still beneath Galarian into more dangers. You can use High Helm as a great hub to start these adventures and then go down as you desire. So the High Helm book itself features a map of each of these layers, as well as a poster map that you can pull out and use for your campaigns that shows each of the, the four maps together 
So you can have a, a really good reference for your uh, adventures, such as, you know, maybe the Sky King's Tomb, which I think uh, we'll be talking about in a little bit. Each part of the city itself includes a detailed gazetteer and that has, you know, your general locations, your adventure hooks, important NPCs. And each of those three main layers also features new rules options connected to that particular part of the city. For example, each of these layers comes with a new background, which is available to anyone. But then there are things like new weapons, which are made by a specific NPC in King's Crown that you can only find there, or a new spell that was developed by the workers in King's Heart. Or if you want, you can go get a tattoo from a tattoo artist in Stonebreach, and that's one of the new magical tattoos featured in this book. Lots of fun options there. The book also, in addition to being a gazetteer to High Helm itself, looks at the broader Five Kings Mountains regions and discusses High Helm's role in the regional politics and gives you a little bit of information as to the various other locations throughout the region. So you get to learn about uh, the monsters that live there, learn about the people that live there, different cities, different other uh, mountains and stuff, and just you know use that as a general uh, idea for starting your own campaigns or expanding on your High Helm campaigns if you prefer. A big thing with these regional politics is like I said, High Helm's importance within the politics. High Helm is the cultural center of it, and it's also kind of the political center uh, of the region. A lot of gatherings happening here, a lot of government uh, action happening within High Helm. And the biggest thing that's going on right now is part of the broader story of what's happening with the NRC and High, how High Helm is connected to it. Uh, a couple of years back in the setting, the people of High Helm discovered an enormous cache of adamantine that they decided to use for themselves to protect themselves from the looming threat of Tarbophon, the Whispering Tyrant. There are undead armies out there, and that's dangerous. Let's figure out a way to protect ourselves, said the people of, of High Helm. So they created this new alloy where they combined uh, adamantine and a couple of other things, very secret special recipe that only they know, to create something called Keepstone, which is both really resilient and uh, defensive defends well against magic attacks, which is really helpful when there's a lich looking to knock on your door at any day. And the current ongoing thing at High Helm is this big project called Torag's Shield, which is essentially just a giant shutter that they can place around the entire mountain in hopes of protecting it and defending the, the area in case Tarbophon does come a, knock, come a knocking. So the ongoing Torag Shield project is kind of really influencing the, the state of High Helm at the moment. And you'll get a chance to learn all about that and what it means for the city, the various districts, the people, and the region as a whole. In addition to the whole gazetteer about the city I mentioned, this is also a book about culture. Uh, you'll get to learn about the various clans that live within the city. There are 12 major clans that each focus on different skills or trade, some of which are focused on farming, another on smithing, some focus on the chronicling of history and dwarven lore. You get to learn about joining these clans how you can change clans if you, you were born into one, you can maybe join a different one, or what happens when you become exiled from a clan. Uh, there's also a bunch of different smaller clans. There, there are more than just 12 clans for all dwarves altogether, but these are the 12 main clans featured in High Helm, and we want to provide this information for folks to use as a foundation to detail other clans and other dwarven settlements, or maybe even use it to, to you know, detail their own brand new clans for their home game. Uh, in addition to clans, the other important thing we want to talk about is clan daggers. We've made a real strong effort to make sure the Pathfinder dwarves have very specific identity. And the clan dagger is one of those specific things that we've added to them. Every dwarven character begins with a, a clan dagger. That's the thing that you're born with. And you'll get to learn about gaining your clan dagger, the importance of a clan dagger, the rituals related to the birth and, and empowerment of a clan dagger. All of that is detailed here in this book. and You'll also get to learn, hey, what if I don't have a clan dagger? Where, where do I get that from? We, we go into a lot of detail about clan daggers just because we wanted to make sure they were an important part of the setting, an important thing for dwarves in the Lost Omen setting. In addition to all that, you'll be learning about the government of High Helm, the various criminal activities of High Helm, different industries and trade. Uh, you'll learn slang. You'll learn how dwarves measure time. How do you measure time when you're underground and there's no light, there's no sun to work with? All of that information is detailed here. And you'll even learn about some of the animals and plants that grow within the city, the, you know, the vermin that people have to deal with, the interesting plants that people pick to create potions and things like that. A lot of that information is get, gets uh, detailed in this book as well. 
big part of dwarven culture is the dwarven pantheon. Uh, there are 10 dwarven gods. They're all one big family headed by Torag, you know, main god of the forge and creation. Very important god. You've learned about him in other books like uh, Gods and Magic, and it's even mentioned in the core rulebook. And we've also talked about uh, Droskar, one of the other gods of the, the Dwarven Pantheon, but there's eight other gods that we've mentioned in the Dwarven Pantheon and haven't really had a chance to detail before. And this is really the chance for us to dig in and talk about these, these various gods in the Dwarven Pantheon. You get to learn about the Pantheon as a whole, and then you get to learn specifically about Angrad, Volka, Drangvit, Fulgrit, Grundinar, Coles, uh, Magrim, and Trude, all of the other eight remaining gods. We also talk about other aspects of Dwarven religion and faith. Specifically, we're talking about the Rivasun, which is an important belief in spirits. It's common among many dwarves. You get to learn about how that is related to various religions. Do they clash? How's that being handled uh, with all the changes in High Helm? You know, are people interested in maintaining that? It's it's a very unique dwarven belief that I think we'll get a chance to hopefully explore more in the future, but at least get to uh, talk a bit about in this book. In addition to all that, of course, we have rules options. You know, we, we want players to come to High Helm and then have fun toys to play with. In addition to the, the ones I mentioned earlier that are specific to the three different layers, there are a bunch of general options. Some are dwarf focus, uh, such as new ancestry feats or uh, new heritage. Others are available to anyone that's in High Helm. There's new animal companions. There's something called an Agdenar, which is kind of a mule that you can ride. Uh, there's a draft lizard, which is another mount that you can ride. And a riding goat. Plenty of mounts for animal companions. There's new magical armaments, weapons and armor. There's new relics and artifacts. Uh, we detail this keepstone. So if you want to use that material for your weapons and armor, you, you can go ahead and do so. And there's a brand new archetype, uh, the Stalwart Defender. Uh, the Stalwart Defender is all about being tough and resilient. They can buckle down to make themselves tougher. And eventually with their with enough feats, they can do things like gain resistances to damage. They can recover hit points while they're in their kind of buckle down stance where they can even stomp to create areas of difficult or greater difficult terrain around them to knock down their foes. Uh, the Stalwart Defender is normally just kind of a Dwarven archetype, but if you visit High Helm, you get to learn the techniques of the Stalwart Defender and take that archetype for yourself, regardless of what uh, ancestor you are. There's a lot more uh, in High Helm, but you know we'll, we'll save that for a later time. The book is out next month in June, so go ahead and pre-order it today. And beyond High Helm, we're looking at uh, Lost Omens in 2024, where we continue with the Tiansha World Guide and Tiansha Character Guide. With those books, we're going to be turning the globe to look at the people and places of Tiansha on the other side of the world. We don't really have time to talk about it right now, but if you want to learn more about these books, make sure to check out our Secrets of Galarian panel on Saturday at noon Pacific. We'll be take, talking a little bit more in depth about Firebrands, High Helm, and of course, these Tian Sha books. And we'll also have a lot of cool art to show off from all of them. You can also ask us anything you want to know about the Lost Omen setting, and we'll share whatever secrets we know about the world, except for maybe that whole thing with Aridin. I think that one's staying locked up. That's all I have for you right now. I want to say thanks for all the love and support that the Lost Omens line has been receiving over the years. We couldn't do this without the fans. We hope that you're excited for what we have in store for the future of Lost Omens. And I'll see you at the Secrets of Galarian panel. Hope you have a great PaizoCon. Hi, I'm Linda Zayas Palmer. I'm the development manager for the narrative team at Paizo. Hey, and I'm James Jacobs. I'm the narrative creative director for Pathfinder at Paizo. We are so excited to be sharing with you today some highlights from what's coming up on Pathfinder Adventures. If you want to see more detail about anything that we are talking about, please check out the panel on Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific for more on Pathfinder Adventures. To follow up on what Luis was just saying about High Helm, the Sky King's Tomb Adventure Path is premiering this August. It's going to be an adventure for level 1 through 10 PCs, where the PCs begin right in High Helm. If you're playing this adventure, you're going to be working closely with the Dwarven clan that's dedicated to studying and preserving history for all. In the course of their adventures, the PCs are going to help uncover a mysterious major piece of history. Investigating it and stopping others from exploiting the discovery, though, is going to draw the PCs deeper and deeper into the Darklands, exploring new features of its eclectic settlements and its dangers. 
This AP will be a great fit for dwarves and have a lot of dwarven themes, but it's not just for dwarves. There will be ways for PCs of any background to get involved in the story. What's coming up next after Sky King's Tomb, James? Well, we're going to do some time travel uh, and talk a little bit about what's happening before Sky King's Tomb. Uh, we're currently uh, in the middle of the Stolen Fate Adventure Path, uh, which is a high-level adventure path for characters of 11th level to 20th level. Uh, first volume is called The Choosing, followed up by The Destiny War, and then ending just before Sky, Tomb, Sky King's Tomb starts with uh, The Worst of All Possible Worlds. And this is an adventure path where you're trying to defend destiny itself. There's these villains out there who are trying to hardwire the future into something that is to their liking and they're bad guys. So you don't want them to be able to choose what fate has in store for reality. Uh, that adventure path ends with some really kind of over the top, you know, hints about what we're doing in the future. And uh, at the same point has just some really over, just it, you, you'll have to check it out when it comes out because there's some stuff we do in that final volume that is some of the most high, I guess, high fantasy, outrageous things we've done in a while. Um, after that, we do go on to Sky King's Tomb, and once Sky King's Tomb, Sky King's Tomb wraps up, we're moving on to uh, an adventure path called Season of Ghosts. Season of Ghosts is a four-part adventure path that starts at first level, will take characters all the way to 12th level, and it's set entirely in the nation of Shenmin in Tin Sha. It's an adventure path that's got a lot of horror themes, and it's sort of organized into the four seasons of the year. The entire adventure path takes place over the course of an entire year. First adventure is the summer that never was, and your player characters awaken in a their hometown and find it's been somehow cursed, and there's bad things going on, ghosts and monsters and, and worse. Second adventure is called Let the Leaves Fall, uh, continues your party's uh, investigations into the nature of this curse that's affecting your hometown of Willowshore. The third adventure uh, takes place in winter, and uh, that one is a adventure path where you're kind of working with everybody in town to kind of prepare for you know, the storms and food shortages and stuff like that, while at the same time following up on some of these clues that maybe allow you to escape this curse. And uh, uh, that one is called uh, No Breath to Cry. The last adventure is called uh, To Bloom Below the Web, and that one takes place during the spring, and it's sort of a adventure path where you're now high level and you're now having to deal with some of the big big meta region type stuff going on around Shenmin and, and how to integrate uh, Willowshore into the, the surrounding uh, political scene. So that whole adventure path uh, will run from October through to January of next year. And at about the same time, we're going to be releasing a standalone adventure called Rust Henge. Uh, we, it's been a while since we've done a, a proper like first level uh, standalone adventure. Uh, this one starts at first level. It's set on the island of Chattakoff, which is sort of northwest, west of Borussia. It's in the western reaches of New Thassalon. And we wanted to set a personal adventure in a truly Pathfinder kind of setting with a lot of um, lore that we, it would serve not only for player characters to jump into the game and learn the game from first level, but also to learn the setting as well. And it's also a case of traditionally we've had Thassalon and uh, the Rune Lords and all that be fodder for really, really high level content. With Rusthenge, we're exploring what's it like to be a low level character in a region where there's now active uh, Rune Lords doing their thing. And that one will be out uh, near the uh, uh, fourth quarter uh, around, I think, October. I'm not sure off the top of my head when that one's coming out. That's Rusthenge. And uh, that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about for uh, our uh, adventure seminar. You'll also, if you have any questions about things, we'll, we'll try to set aside some time at the end of that uh, seminar to answer questions for people as well. Anything else I missed, Linda? Or? Uh, I don't think so. Well, I mean, there, there are some other things, but people are going to have to stay tuned for that. Yeah, there's some stuff coming. It's pretty exciting. I'm personally really excited to hear people's reaction to it. Now we'd like to turn things over to Mark Merlin and John File, who have some news about what's going on with partners and the community. Hi, Finders. I'm Mark Moreland. I am Paizo's Director of Brand Strategy. I'm John Morgantini. I am Paizo's uh, Community Manager and Social Media Manager. 
And uh, we're here to talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, Pathfinder and Starfinder offerings uh, that are produced by Paizo um, that are either generated by uh, one of our many licensed partners or by the community themselves. We've got some big news on the licensing front this week. Uh, the Pathfinder Nexus character creator open beta started this week. So as of right now, you can go to pathfindernexus.com and give a spin of the uh, premium character creator that they've put together uh, there uh, by our friends at, at Demiplane. Uh, so be sure to check that out. We've also got a, a Kickstarter going on right now from our friends at Dynamite Comics. Uh, they're offering uh, the opportunity for you to uh, uh, kickstart trade uh, compilations of three different Pathfinder series. Well, two Pathfinder series and one Starfinder series. The Pathfinder series are uh, Pathfinder Worldscape Volume 3 and Pathfinder Wake the Dead, which is Volume 8 of the Pathfinder uh, ongoing storyline. And the Issue number one of Pathfinder Wake the Dead actually comes out next week. So be sure that you head to your local uh, comic book store and pick up a copy of Pathfinder Wake the Dead number one. Uh, it comes out on the 31st. Then in uh, June, June 21st, Starfinder Angels of the Drift number one, which is the first full Starfinder comic book uh, produced by Dynamite will hit uh, shelves. And if you want to kickstart the uh, trade uh, compilation for that, uh, that's also available on the Kickstarter. Uh, you can pick up uh, past uh, comic compilations through that Kickstarter as well. And we'll provide a link for that in the chat as well as the show notes uh, below if you're watching this after uh, the live broadcast. So be sure to check those out. Uh, they're great. The, the Pathfinder Wake the Dead series is written by Fred Van Linty, a uh, comic veteran. Uh, he also penned the uh, Fumbus special issue that we had a uh, year or two years ago, uh, as well as um, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk, uh, a bunch of other titles. And then uh, the Starfinder uh, Angels of the Drift series is written by Paizo's well, formerly Paizo's own James L. Sutter, um, who was uh, Starfinder's first creative director and author of uh, such Pathfinder tales uh, novels as Death's Heretic and um, and his own uh, his own uh, fiction that he's gone on to, to do since leaving Paizo. But he's come back to write uh, this for us, and we're really excited about that. Uh, in terms of other Kickstarters, uh, our friends at BCOM Studios, uh, who uh, we have a, a multi-game deal with to, to produce uh, several video games for us. Uh, the first of those games is Pathfinder Abomination Vault, uh, which will be kickstarting soon. Uh, that uh, We're recording this ahead of time, so sorry to, to burst the uh, appearance of this being live. It's not uh, PaizoCon for me in the past is actually a week in the future. Uh, we don't yet know the specific date that that Kickstarter is going to go live. Uh, it may actually be live now. And if it is, then oops. Um, but if not, it's coming very soon. That'll give you the opportunity to uh, to kickstart the, the first action RPG set in the Pathfinder world. That's an adaptation of the uh, Pathfinder Abomination Vault adventure path and uh and that's going to allow you to play uh between one and four players going through uh the ruins of gauntlet keep and uh the abomination vaults beneath um and uh playing as ezrin amiri harsk or kira and uh but with with that uh group of, of characters you'll be able to work on strategic combos um fun traps and problem solving um as you delve deep into the into the dungeon head back up to uh otari to uh to gear up and there you have a number of stretch goals uh planned for that campaign to add extra functionality to the town as well as extra uh character customization and and, and different things as you go um uh, further in into your adventuring career and they've got another game that they're working on that we're not quite ready to talk about yet. Look for an announcement on that here within the next few weeks. Uh, but the second game we're really excited for as well. And um, we're, we're very excited uh, to share more about that in the coming weeks. Um, 
we've also got um, uh, one uh, announcement that was just handed to us by by our partners at Steve Jackson Games this last week. They said, hey, while you guys have everyone's attention at PaizoCon, can you let them know that Pathfinder Revolution, the Pathfinder reskin of the popular Revolution board game that has been out for a while, um, is finally getting a street date. That's coming out in Q4 of this year, so you'll be able to get it in time for the holidays. And that Pathfinder reskin um, sets path, uh, sets the Revolution game uh, in Corvosa along or at the same time as the events of curse of the crimson throne so the revolution taking place is that of the people of corvosa against queen Eliosa. it's a perfect match in terms of game mechanics and the the story of that adventure it includes it includes all of the existing expansions that they released and this is going to be their sole imprint version of pathfinder revolution going forward so rather than reprint the original version and the Pathfinder version, they said, hey, we're just going to do the Pathfinder version. So everyone, keep a, a lookout for uh, Pathfinder Revolution coming in the the in late 2023 uh, from our friends at Steve Jackson Games. While you're at the uh, in, in the Discord, be sure to stop by uh, specifically our VTT partners. All four of our uh, officially partnered VTTs, that's Foundry VTT, Fantasy Grounds, Roll20, and Alchemy, all have their own sections there. They're running all their own programming. Uh, th those are the tables around which people are playing games at PaizoCon 2023. Normally we'd have a full ballroom at a hotel here in Seattle where people can play. It's totally virtual this year. That means that no matter where you are in the world, what time zone you're in, what your familiarity is with virtual tabletops, there's an option for you. And it's a great opportunity for you to try out the different options that are out there with experienced game masters who are running uh, not only Pathfinder Society and Starfinder Society content, but other games as well. So be sure to check those out. Look in on those uh, those VTT partners. They're huge uh, assets to the community, to us at Paizo, to gaming as a whole. Uh, for better or worse, gaming takes place on computers these days, and uh, we're leaning fully into that, and they are incredible partners that we couldn't be happier uh, to support and to get support from. So be sure to check those out. And on that note, I will uh, hand it off to John to talk a little bit more about some of that community efforts um, that we have going on here at the show. Great. Thanks, Mark. Um, as Mark said, I am the community manager, which means that I am sort of the, the face and voice of Paizo when it comes to content creators and what they are trying to accomplish. If you're here this weekend and you want to learn more about our setting, our IP, Galarian, how you can get involved. There are a couple of different ways. We have the forums. If you go to paizo.com and you have an account there, you are free to post on the forums. You'll find hundreds of daily posts about everything from how do I achieve this mechanically to what do you think about me adding in this creature? Or what if I change this adventure path in this certain way? Basically anything you can think of that you wanna talk about, someone else will wanna talk about it with you on our forums. If you are a YouTuber or someone who wants to have visual displays of things, we have our community use policy. Anything that's been in the blogs, uh, and we have a large section uh, on the website that you can go check out. It's a variety of artwork and other things that you're able to use so that you can make your YouTube videos discussing Pathfinder and you don't have to worry about us breaking down your door for any reason. The Compatibility license. If you want to write your own things and you want to have your own setting, if you have your own setting and you really want to use the Pathfinder 2 system because you like the way the mechanics work, you like the character customization options, you can use our compatibility license. Info about that is also on the website. Or if you want to to spread your creative talent into Galarian itself, we have Pathfinder and Starfinder Infinite. There's a whole website for it. We've partnered with one bookshelf and you are able to use our IP, our setting, our rules and make up what uh, adventures or items or creatures. There's dozens of things to look at. They're actually running a sale right now. You can look up the PaizoCon 23 mega bundle and there's going to be lots of stuff for you there. Uh, Anything you might be interested in, it's a really fun place to just kind of check out and see what other creatives are doing and kind of just get a vibe for the whole thing. 
if you have a library or a group who might be interested in teaching people how to play TTRPGs who have not done it before or might be just dipping their toe in, I have a program where I donate to groups and libraries. Feel free to reach out to me. My email is community at paizo.com. Let's start up a discussion. Tell me about your group. I want to know everything. I want to know what they're interested in. I want to know experience level, all of that kind of stuff. So I can tailor a, a specific greeting package for you that will let me uh, help you teach others about TTRPGs and get yourself involved in this crazy thing that we're all here this weekend to celebrate. Um, with that, I think uh, Thurston and Jenny are up next to maybe talk about some some Starfighter stuff because that sounds yeah, like a lot of fun. I think so. There's uh, there's lots of exciting stuff on the on the horizon. Is it called a horizon when you're in space? I don't know. Okay, Something horizon, like that. Maybe. Uh, I'm sure Thirsty and uh, and Jenny have the answer for that, and so we will kick it to them. Thank you all for your time. Enjoy PaizoCon 2023, and we'll see you around. Wow, wow, that last panel. Can you can you believe what we just saw? By the way, everybody, I don't know what we just saw, but I'm sure the last presentation was great. Hi, my name is Thurston Hillman. I am the Managing Creative Director here for Starfinder, and with me today is my partner in crime. I'm Jenny Darzavsky, and I am the seamless developer working on Starfinder. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. Hello, hello, hello. We are here to bring up some presentations for fun and exciting new Starfinder uh, products, you know, big announcements in Starfinder land. You know, as we get into summer, we're kicking off a bunch of things and we just wanted to really uh, be the first to share some of this with everybody. So, you know, Starfinder, for those of you who don't know, is our setting in the future. It's it's good old Pathfinder in space. And, you know, we've been going on for, for many years now, and we're going to be going on for many more. Don't worry, but we've got some really fun products to talk about today. And I think I think we just dive right in. Like that's, you know, people people for these panels, they're here to get the spoilers. So we're just we're just doing it. We're just doing it right now. Let's do Go it live. OK. All right. So first off, let's talk about something that we've already solicited. It's already got a product page. We haven't talked about it a lot uh, publicly yet. That would be Starfinder Enhanced, our new 192 page Starfinder rule book. You're going to see some fancy art. Oh, look at this art. Look, there's zombies and there's there's witch warpers and solarians and lots of zombies did i mention there's lots of cybernetic zombies on that cover it's gorgeous it's gorgeous everybody uh starfinder enhanced though is a book that is the book of player options for starfinder we're really excited to get this out this is a chance uh for the starfinder line to really give players a lot of new options and just increase the repertoire of what's available to them and along with that you know the game wouldn't be the same without classes. And one of the fun things about Starfinder Enhanced is that we are actually enhancing some of our classes. That uh, means the four of our classes in this case, the Envoy, the Solarian, the Technomancer, and the Witch Warper are all getting some, some you know, a little bit of paint uh, paint on them, some, some, new, some new options, and not just in the form of new class options. We're actually looking at the base class and providing you some cool new rules for that. I know, um, you know, Jenny's been in some home campaigns of mine that maybe have inspired <laughs> some of these changes. Maybe we're, we're, you know, bringing our own experience in as well as the experience of countless, you know, members of our community. And we're really excited to get those out. But you know, it's not just it's not just enhanced classes that's in this book. Oh no, there's class options for every class, including the nanosite, the evolutionist, the precog, everything, every class, every class. I see, you know, Jen, you're just you're just ooing and eyeing because you're thinking about what we're gonna use in our home campaigns because Oh boy, there's so much. Um, new spells, new species, new themes, new archetypes, and feats. You know, if there's one thing I don't think there's enough of in Starfinder right now, it's feats. We have over Thirsty. 90 of them in this book. <laughs> yes, that's yes. What was, oh, that's what I was about to ask you. How many new feeds are we going to present in this book? <laughs> it's, it's over 90. 90. I mean, well. Over you know, 90. Over 90, over 90, yeah. Uh, along with that, we also have some new rules for scaling equipment. This lets you, you know, maybe you're that type who has that, that, that family heirloom pistol and you just want to keep that on you. Well, we got you covered. Uh, for those of you pistol. running... Your grandma's pistol. Exactly. It's the best kind of pistol. 
well now now you don't have to hawk it out for the corona laser pistol once oh, that granny's God. azimuth is gone <laughs> um along with that we've also got you know uh new gm tools for better dc scaling for high level adventures as um jenny and i both come from an organized play background we know sometimes those high level dcs can maybe get a little bit out of hand we're going to give you some new guidance and some updates on how to handle high level play and maybe where the those skill dcs should sit at finally something i'm really really excited about for this book um resolve points new uses for resolve points i could go on about this forever but you know the resolve points is a key aspect of starfinder right now and we're really going to be diving into different uses for all classes not just you know oh hey this class lets you use some resolve points no we're getting some new uses out of them that are just going to be really engaging at the table and i'm really excited to see i think it's going to bring a new dimension to every starfinder game and i can't wait to see people sort of diving in and you know, taking their lives into their own hands when they maybe spend all those resolve points and don't have them to do important things like stay alive. You know, just just a little gambling in your RPG. <laughs> yeah, we um, never rolled dice in an RPG. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's that is Starfinder Enhanced. Um, it is a book that I think everyone on the team is really looking forward to. I know. I cannot wait to have it for my home games. Oh, spoiler alert, I already can because I have the files because it's it's coming out in <laughs> October, everybody. It's going to be great. But, you know, even though it's a, it's a fair ways off before we have that book, we are going to be going into some spoilers for it. Um, if you uh, if you pop back here on Sunday at uh, 1 p.m. Pacific, so two days from now, we're going to be having our Starfinder Nuts and Bolts panel where we're going to dive in. We're just going to dive all the way in to Starfinder Enhanced and start giving giving away the secrets. We, you know, I've, I've done some interviews, maybe mentioned a few things. We're going we're gonna to go further beyond with this and give you all of the secrets for Starfinder Enhanced, or at least as many as they will legally allow me to give before I'm actually giving <laughs> away the whole book. So please come back and check out uh, that panel again that'll be starfinder nuts and bolts uh 1 p.m pacific on sunday all right i think i've i think i've blathered on a lot about cool books and cool content but i think you know people are here for new news something something maybe they we are. haven't talked about before new something you know that doesn't have a product page yet jenny what do you what do you got yes. for us well, uh, we actually teased this just a little tiny bit last year at PaizoCon, but we have not formally announced it. So I am very pleased, beyond pleased, to announce to you that very soon we are going to be having a new hardcover adventure path called Mechageddon. Uh, it is a third to 18th level adventure using the mech rules presented in Tech Revolution. I know a lot of people love those mech rules, myself especially. Uh, I might have a little bit of a, of a bias about mechs. I love mechs. And so it was super fun for me to be the lead on this project and work with an awesome team of people who are also very passionate about mechs and getting suiting up in big stompy robots and punching and shooting and pew pew firing all the missiles at things which is what you will get to do uh you will get i believe i said you get up to tier 17 mechs since we are getting up to 18th level that's pretty awesome you'll be starting on daimalko for those who don't know that is our planet of kaiju in Starfinder uh, out there in near space. And you will get to explore the wider cosmos as the adventure progresses, but starting out on that planet, I I wonder what you'll be fighting to start out. Anyway, it'll it's a secret. Uh, we'll find out more be about starships. that soon. Yeah, yeah, totally. You're gonna transform and fight starships. Yeah, that, that would never happen. Uh, so yeah, the big thing with, uh, with Mechageddon is that you will get to confront a major threat in mechs at the end. Uh, no more spoilers about what that is for now, however. But you can learn more about this at our Secrets of the Pact Worlds panel, which is actually starting at 3 p.m. Pacific today. So Whoa. you better be there because I'll probably be dropping some more spoilers too until Thirsty tells me to stop. <laughs> and more pretty art because like again, yes. look at that cover art for Mickey. Oh my gosh, so good. So good. It's so good. Right I were Oh, I remember there was uh, an art um, an art note I actually made during that process that was please add more missiles. So just expect more just absolute amazing ridiculousness from the art. We're gonna spoil. 
at this panel. Yeah, one thing I'm really excited about for Mechageddon is that, you know, we we often have a pretty loud and vocal community that wants more high level content. So yes, get ready. You're going up to 18th level in this sucker. And, you know, that's with some big mechs, which means you're going to be fighting some some pretty high level threats um i'm i'm very excited i know that i hadn't quite yet taken on my position when this was uh underway but i was just so excited and the amount of passion that jen and the freelancers have put into this project speaking of which you know our freelancers are great we've had some excellent people working on these we're going to be spoiling who exactly was involved in some of these projects at the respective panels but really we're just we're just excited to get this out there and you know we look forward to mech again and that'll be coming out um in, in 2024, it'll be following Woo. up after we release Starfinder Enhanced and the, the Shifted Scoured Stars Adventure Path. It'll be our first all original hardback adventure path. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to shake things up a bit. And we're very excited for that. Uh, but uh, to sort of bring it all back home, I think, you know, the, the, the two takeaways here are going to be come check out our, you know, secrets of the uh, the packed worlds later today. And then our uh, nuts and bolts panel on Sunday at, you know, 1 p.m. on Sunday, 3 p.m. today, both Pacific. And also come check out our secrets of the packed worlds panel later today, because maybe we have uh, one or two extra secrets in store. At least, you know, we like to tease things and maybe let you know what might be around the bend. So from both Jenny and I here on the Starfinder team, we're really excited for what's coming and we cannot wait to uh, get these books out and have everyone out there consume them and play these games that bring us all together. But with that, we're going to hand things over to our good friends in org play, uh, Linda and Alex. Hello, everybody. Welcome to PaizoCon. We are so excited to share with you the latest updates with organized play. I am still Linda Zayas Palmer, and here with me I have... Uh, yes, hi, I'm Alex Spidel. I'm our Organized Play Coordinator here to talk about what's going on in Organized Play. So Alex, what is Organized Play? Yes, the, the most important question we've got. So, uh, Paizo Organized Play is our Pathfinder and Starfinder Society campaigns. They are worldwide living campaigns. And what that means, we've got players all over the world in dozens of different countries. Um, they're living campaigns, so that means that the players' actions really affect the events of the campaign. We ask people to report back things like, did the bad guys survive? Were they captured? Were they defeated? Uh, did you make friends with certain NPCs? And we take those, uh, Linda's team of developers takes those and uses those to further the storyline of the campaign. The other nice thing about our organized play campaigns is that they're designed to be for more casual play. You can come in and come out as you like. They're designed for sort of weekly play at game stores or play at conventions. So for people who don't have a regular gaming group or don't necessarily have the ability to commit to like a regular schedule of a campaign that happens weekly or bi-weekly or something like that. Our organized play programs kind of give you the chance to come in and come out as you have free time. You don't have to worry about missing too much of the story or key plot beats. You can just sort of play scenarios as you like. The other nice thing about these adventures is that we write them just like we write any of our adventure paths or our one shots or any of our other adventures. So if you're ever looking for content to incorporate into an ongoing campaign or anything like that, they're a great way to pick up, run a one shot for the evening, whether you're trying to just get into Pathfinder or you're just looking for some extra content for your campaign. They're a really great thing that you can incorporate into all of that. Um, and we've got tons of play going on at PaizoCon, plenty of different adventures that you can play uh, here. And Linda, because you work with the developers on kind of the storylines of what's going on, can you tell us a little bit about the adventures that we are launching here at PaizoCon that people can play for the very first time today? Yes, of course. We have on the Pathfinder Society side, Adventure 413, Within the Prairies by Marlo Miller. This is an adventure set on the continent of Arcadia which hasn't seen much screen time in our official products. The PCs start off this adventure as the caretakers of one of the legendary star guns. It's up to them to track down one of the few people who can repair this weapon, but they haven't escaped the notice of a dangerous villain. Will their mission end in more opportunities for Arcadian adventure or will it end in disaster? It's all up to your PCs. Then we've got Pathfinder Society Scenario 414, Shattering Golden Chains by Matt Duvall. 
In this adventure, they, there's the, we see the return of the genie Safa, who is known for their talent for whimsically twisting the wishes of those who would attempt to exploit their power for personal gain. And now they have a favor to ask of their allies in the Pathfinder Society. Some help settling a bit of unfinished business with a uh, certain mm -hmm. unsavory character. And uh, these adventures are going to be leading up uh, in a future months to the final confrontation with Aslan the Night Hag at the end of year four. We've also got some great content for you on the Starfinder Society side. This is the launch of our new Year of Fortune's Fall, which is coming right on the heels of last year's Year of Redemption Rise. Over the last few years, there have been some hints and clues about a mysterious criminal group that the Starfinder Society has just been calling the Organization. When the organization escalates their operations, the Starfinder Society decides it's time to take the fight to them. But it's not easy tracking down a group that's so good at covering its track. Just who is uh, pulling the strings, shall we say, as you can see in the uh, the art for this season with the lovely puppet master thing going on. So good. Uh, will the society prevail? Uh, you can learn more about the season as a whole at the organized play panel later this weekend from Starfinder Society lead Jessica Catalan. But I've got a little more to say about the adventures themselves at PaizoCon. Uh, if you want to get started with the new meta plot, there is no better place to start than Starfinder Society Scenario 601, the intro to the Year of Fortune's Fall by Mafia. This is a repeatable adventure that premieres the new season. Uh, tip for you, uh, Starfinder and Pathfinder agent staff there. If you are uh, invited to a totally peaceful function where nothing is going to go wrong, hold on to your hats because uh, this museum gala is no exception. And uh, given that it's the intro to the year of Fortune's Fall, which is all about this mysterious organization, uh, might guess who might be involved in the things that go wrong here. Uh, speaking of uh, chances to follow up on some things that we've had going on that are real interesting, we've got uh, Starfinder Society Scenario 602 Drift Scars by Aaron Roberts. One of the foundational pieces of the Starfinder canon is the Drift, a plane of existence that makes faster than light travel possible. Everything went haywire recently when the drift broke in uh, the drift crisis. So this gives you a chance to explore more about what's changed in the pack world and beyond. Uh, one of the interesting fallouts of this galaxy expanding catastrophe was the formation of drift lanes, which are basically these uh, these fast travel tunnels between two places. Um, but folks have been discovering some and they're like, well, we know we're on one side. What's on the other side? Is it new? Is it interesting? Is it dangerous? The Starfinder Society's found one of these lanes and they're looking for agents to find out what's on the other side. And then last but certainly not least, we've got our new interactive special premiering at PaizoCon, Starfinder Society Scenario 599, Battle for the Bulwark by Lyle Cap and Cole Cronwater. The Starfinder Society's Exo Guardians faction had an impressive fortress called Sangoro's Bulwark until a few years ago. Someone or something attacked the base, it just fell out of contact and not really sure exactly what happened. So it's up to a large group of Starfinders, which could include you, to join in the expedition to reclaim the base, rescue any survivors, and figure out just what happened there. All games are going to start at 3 p.m. today. And if folks want to get involved in PaizoCon games, Alex, what should they do? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so excited to play all of those this weekend, actually. So all of our games are available on our Warhorn. It's warhorn.net slash PaizoCon online 2023 uh you can go ahead over there we'll send you the link um you can sign up for any games as long as you've got a paizocon badge the paizocon badge gets you into all the games you could possibly want all weekend whether you're a brand new player or a seasoned veteran uh so go check out the tables there we've also reserved a lot of the tables for our introductory scenarios like the new intro tier of fortune's fall we've reserved a couple of walk-up seats there so if it's close to game time and you've realized you've got some free time you can head to the paizo events Discord server, and uh, from there head over to the walk up channels, drop in and say, hey, here's what I'd like to play, and our wonderful HQ volunteers will do their best to get you seated in a game. So we've got tons of games all weekend for uh, all skill levels. We encourage you all to come out and try out some games. Uh, now, Linda, I know that this weekend we are launching year six of Starfinder Society, and you said that we're leading up to the end of year four of Path Society. Can you tell me a little bit, just give me a, a little hint about what's coming next for the Pathfinder Society, just a little bit to whet their appetites? 
Yes, of course. We're going to have the launch at Gen Con of Pathfinder Society Year 5, the Year of Unfettered Exploration. While our last year, Boundless Wonder, focused on treasures, this coming year is going to be focusing on exploration of locations all across the world and perhaps beyond as well. This is going to be a flexible meta plot that's really easy to jump in and play, full of discovery. You can learn a lot more about this at the Organized Play panel from Pathfinder Society lead Shea Snow. And uh, Alex, I heard you have something exciting you wanted to talk about too that's uh, tied to what's going on in Starfinder Society. Me? Well, I suppose. I suppose I can toot my own horn. Uh, the other exciting thing happening in Starfinder Society this year is that the leader of the Starfinder Society, First Seeker Ehu Hadith, has announced his retirement. And so, of course, the Starfinder Society is in need of a new First Seeker. We have solicited submissions from players around the world to submit their characters to be the new First Seeker, and the team has selected four of these candidates. Players will get to meet these candidates in an upcoming scenario released at Gen Con, Starfinder Society 606 Tomorrow's Seekers, written by yours truly. You'll get to meet these candidates, learn a little bit about each of their missions, and then afterwards you, the players, will get to vote on which of these candidates becomes the next first seeker. It's very exciting. We really love how people get to get involved, not just with the campaign, but also with the actual in-world storyline. And so I hope you all come out to Gen Con or Gen Con Online and check out that scenario. But again, you can hear more about this at the Organized Play panel, 2 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. That's in just a little while, so hang around through the remaster panels. Um, see you then! Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to see you. And uh, with that, uh, I think we'll hand it off to Eric Mona for the final exciting reveals of the PaizoCon Online keynote. Wow, thank you, Alex and Linda. That is amazing. Organized play is really a great way to get connected to Pathfinder and Starfinder, whether here at PaizoCon 2023 or in your own home uh, region. You can go on to paizo.com and get connected with your uh, local volunteers, and we'd love to see you playing Pathfinder and Starfinder Society at cons and game stores or in your own home or right here at PaizoCon 2023. So we're coming up to the very end of the keynote uh, for this year. We've got all kinds of programming just ahead, including a two hour deep dive on the Pathfinder Remaster project that's gonna start right after uh, this presentation wraps up. I'd like to thank all of my colleagues on the uh, keynote uh, for sharing uh, their projects with us just now. I'd like to thank all of my colleagues uh, who will be in panels and on Discord and running games throughout the week. And of course, I'd like to express a thank you to our partners and sponsors for PaizoCon, but especially to the folks behind the scenes uh, running PaizoCon for us, including our friends at Two Kings Entertainment, who are bringing this and other videos to you all weekend long, and especially to Paizo's marketing staff, uh, who have been working tirelessly uh, to uh, make this whole thing happen. So thank you all for coming to PaizoCon, but thanks also to the members of Paizo who make it such a successful and fun event every year. We literally couldn't do it without any of you, and it's great to have all of us together over this weekend, sharing in our love of Pathfinder and Starfinder. So so once again, welcome to PaizoCon 2023. Please check out the whole schedule of events at paizo.com slash paizocon, where you'll see everything going on on Twitch. You'll get involved with the Discord, with our Warhorn that'll put you in games. And uh, it is going to be a wonderful weekend. And we are absolutely thrilled to have you all be a part of it. I want to say one more reminder to check out the Paizo blog for the discount code that was just posted today. So check that out and uh, and uh, get some, some sweet, sweet savings as you're enjoying your gaming weekend. Uh, and, you know, with that, I'd like to pretty much say uh, that's almost it. Thank you, everybody. But I did at the beginning of the panel, say that I was going to do at least one reveal. We passed a lot of the reveals around to the whole staff, but I got one. I got one, and I'm going to share it with you now. And it is something that I am super, super, super excited for. And that is Pathfinder Adventure Path number 200. 
when we started Pathfinder, Pathfinder, the brand started with Pathfinder Adventure Path number one, Burnt Offerings by our very own creative director, James Jacobs. He reinvented goblins. Uh, we, with the help of our cover artist, Wayne Reynolds, uh, introduced the Pathfinder Iconics way back in that first Rise of the Rune Lords uh, campaign that we did. And we've subsequently re uh, returned uh, to uh, Rune Lord adjacent themes throughout Pathfinder's history. And one of those elements that continues uh, throughout the entire uh, Pathfinder uh, releases through 2007 is the humble town of Sandpoint. And I am very happy to announce today that Pathfinder number 200, which will be coming out in March of 2024, is a special double-sized Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure entitled Seven Dooms for Sandpoint. It is an adventure uh, of uh, levels four, uh, starts at level four, goes up to, uh, I think, nine or something. I forgot to write down when it ends, but it's a big, chunky adventure. And uh, it, in fact, I know it's an awesome adventure because it is being written by James Jacobs, the author of Pathfinder number one. We're bookending Pathfinder number one and Pathfinder number 200. Same author, same town, but several years have passed since 2007. And so what's going on in Sandpoint? What are the dooms that a conspiracy is leading to? I know the answer to this because this adventure is not only James's opportunity to return to the setting that he created back in 2007 and that we have subsequently revisited time and time again, but this is an adaptation of the original Paizo office campaign. The campaign that we started at Paizo before Pathfinder even came out. So in 2000, like Late 2006, I think we started this campaign. It started as a playtest campaign for Pathfinder First Edition. We played for several years. Uh, it is the home of my beloved barbarian character, Ostog the Unslain. The, the campaign had a superstar player base, including Jason Bullman, uh, uh, our, our former managing editor, uh, F. Wesley Schneider, uh, Sean Reynolds was in there, um, just a ton of members of the Paizo staff, uh, James L. Sutter, uh, Christopher Paul Carey, a, a, a murderer's row of uh, first decade uh, Paizo employees uh, had their chance to explore a dangerous dungeon known as the Pit just outside the town of Sandpoint. And James has uh, been working on a published version of this adventure almost ever since. And so I am thrilled to announce today, and, and we should have a cover showing up here uh, as I'm speaking, but I am thrilled to announce that in 2014, in March of 2014, Pathfinder Adventure Path for a special double-sized issue that will be released in both soft cover and a hardcover edition for folks who want to have uh, either. Um, that will be a one-shot, sort of standalone, double-sided celebration of 200 volumes of Pathfinder Adventure Path. We've made it 50 volumes beyond what Dungeon Magazine that it kind of grew out of ever had over its entire life. That's monthly tireless work from everybody at Paizo. And we finally made it to 200. We are super thrilled and we are excited to celebrate with a return to some of the elements that launched the Pathfinder brand in the first place. James and company will have much more to say about Seven Dooms for Sandpoint uh, tomorrow uh, on Saturday uh, at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, during the Pathfinder Adventure panel. So again, go to paizo.com slash paizocon and check out the entire panel of events. Make sure you go to that one if you're interested to hear about our latest new mega adventure. Um, but uh, otherwise, there's all kinds of cool programming. paizo.com slash paizocon is your one-stop hub for everything you need to know about PaizoCon 2023. But the most important thing I'd like you to know is that all of us at Paizo welcome you into our community and welcome you to what may be your first PaizoCon or maybe just one of many. But either way, you're among family here. Uh, we are so happy to have you. Have a great time. Roll lots of 20s. Get some gaming in. Chat with our, our creators. Have a great time time. We welcome you. We wish you well. We'll see you throughout the weekend, folks. Later.